When it comes to space, there are two famous monsters that always come up first, the Xenomorph and the Yatya, better known as the Alien and the Predator. These two franchises were often the first to be mentioned when it came to sci-fi horror. And for good reason, these kick So it's no surprise that we would eventually see these two creatures duke it out in battle. But the journey getting there was anything but simple. From James Cameron comparing it to Frankenstein meets the Wolfman, to waiting on an election for casting decisions. We are here to tell you what the f*** happened to Alien vs Predator. The journey to receiving this clash of titans was quite the arduous ride, but where did it all begin? Way back in the far distant year of 1989, Dark Horse Comics published Aliens vs Predator, and it absolutely blew up. Who'da thunk it, putting these two against each other in a story? And we saw that story repeated several times in books, video games, and even 1990s Predator 2 made reference to it, with a lone Xeno skull on the Predator ship. But both franchises were far from dead. Predator 2 had released to a box office total of 57 million, and Alien 3 and Alien Resurrection still saw a good deal of success. In fact, Alien's helmer James Cameron was even in the midst of developing a fifth Alien movie. However, as soon as talks of Alien vs Predator started, Cameron stopped working on his story, feeling they were destroying the property. Peter Briggs wrote the original spec script, which was entirely based around the Dark Horse comic. Unfortunately, the script just sat on the shelf at 20th Century Fox for over a decade, until some movement finally started again in 2002. The issue was simple. The franchises needed to cool off before they could do the crossover. With Alien Resurrection successfully pulling off that, Fox pushed forward. Kevin Fox and James DeMonico wrote a draft and, like the Briggs draft before them, based it upon the Dark Horse comic. This proved to be a mistake, though, as producer John Davis rejected it, wanting the story set on Earth. Having found success with the Resident Evil series, Paul W.S. Anderson took the opportunity to pitch his own AVP story to Davis, which even included some concept art. Davis felt that Anderson was able to pay respect to both franchises, a rather difficult feat. They brought on Shane Salerno to help polish the script and he also helped during production. Anderson took on directing duties and suddenly the film that no one wanted to make was ramping up production. Unsurprisingly, the first actor cast for the production was actually Lance Henriksen. And you may be asking yourself, but how can Henriksen be in it? His character isn't even alive yet in the Alien universe. And yes, with the difficulty of the Alien films being set far off in the future, the idea of using any characters from those films outside of the Xenomorphs seemed impossible. Thankfully, cyborgs exist in the Alien universe, and their design just so happened to be based on their creator, Charles Bishop Wayland. He's the CEO of Wayland Industries, which would later merge with the Utani Corporation, where they're busy being super evil in the future. So, Anderson was able to get his connection to the alien verse. As for a connection to the Predator franchise, we were very close to getting Arnold Schwarzenegger reprising his role of Dutch. Arnold was in the midst of a re-election campaign for California governor. Had he lost, he would have taken part in a brief cameo at the end, stepping out of the massive Predator ship. Unfortunately though, Schwarzenegger was re-elected, and we never got Dutch's return. Most of the cast of Explorers were European, as Anderson wanted to have a worldly and diverse group. Ewan Bremner, Tommy Flanagan, and Colin Salmon were all recognizable character actors and helped to fill out the crew roles. Which is good, because these people get very little development, so any familiarity is greatly appreciated. One part that Anderson had trouble casting for was the lead, Alexa Woods. Loosely based on the character Machiko Naguchi from the comics, hundreds of actresses auditioned. But after impressing Anderson, Sana Lathan was selected just one week prior to shooting. 
As for how they were going to bring the alien and predator together in a story, there was the difficult task of dealing with two properties in two very different time periods. Anderson didn't want to conflict with any established canon for either series, so setting it on Earth proved difficult, as the xenomorphs are an unknown creature in the Alien series. Had there been some conflict during the 21st century, the Xenos would be well known. Something that they completely forgot for Alien vs Predator Requiem. But for this one, it was decided to set the film in Antarctica. The Predator race would return to Earth every 100 years for a rite of passage ritual that involved hunting down the Xenomorphs. Sometimes, however, it would not go their way, and they would be forced to wipe out the entire area. This was supposed to explain the disappearance of many different civilizations over the millennia. A group of explorers from Wayland Industries set out to explore the ancient pyramid beneath the ice in Antarctica. Only when they get there, it becomes a battle for survival, as the xenomorphs keep breeding and the predators want to hunt them all down. It gets pretty ridiculous at points, and even features the much maligned decision of teaming one of the predators up with a human. But it does feature one of the coolest endings ever, so I'll give it that. There had been many different rumors about the film over the years, that it would be set on a hostile world where the creatures would duke it out in a fight pit, another claim that humans would try to lure predators to a location with alien eggs, or my personal favorite, set far in the future. This follows a similar plot to Alien, only a predator boards their ship waiting for a chance to face his greatest challenge, the Xenomorph. Really, no matter where they started, these stories always ended with the aliens and predators duking it out, usually with a trail of human bodies in their wake. With a budget of approximately $60 million, the production started in the Czech Republic in late 2003, with the film taking place mostly in Antarctica, specifically in an ancient pyramid, nearly 30 unique sets were required. Having already done the creature work on the prior two Alien films, Amalgamated Dynamic was brought aboard the project. Despite having very established designs, many elements were changed for the creatures to give each one a distinct look. They're also considerably larger than their prior appearances. The aliens are much slimmer, mostly relying on puppeting and CGI versus the man-in-a-suit approach. The massive Alien Queen was built in three different versions, full size, a miniature one, and finally the CGI model. That cool fight scene between the Predator and Alien that goes all slow motion? One whole month to film. Which is even more mind-blowing when you find out how fast the whole thing was shot. Despite the massive production, Alien vs Predator was shot in only two and a half months. For such a large action movie, this was significantly lower than its contemporaries. But it wasn't just filming that was condensed. Even the post-production was just four months long. Again, these numbers are absolutely unheard of for the time. Let's look at another action horror film that released that year, Van Helsing. The Hugh Jackman-led film had an estimated budget of $160 million, filmed for six months, and had nearly 11 months of post-production. God damn. Alien vs Predator released on August 13th, 2004 in the United States and brought in over $38 million on its opening weekend. Worldwide, the film was able to end its run at over $177 million, making it a massive success. But critics were not kind to the creature feature, earning a 22% fresh rating on Rotten Tomatoes. The critical consensus was that gore without scares and cardboard cutout characters make this clash of the monsters a dull sit. Fans have been kinder, although the criticism over the lack of blood and the massive linebacker-like design of the Predators is valid. Oddly enough, James Cameron, who famously hated the idea of pitting the two creatures against each other, actually liked the movie, calling it pretty good and ranking it as his third favorite Alien film. So much for it killing the property. There was an unrated version released on DVD that gives the film a little more flavor, 
but don't get your hopes up about much added gore, because it's essentially the same movie in that regard. There's an added scene at the beginning where we see what's happening to the early 20th century humans in what we can assume is the last rite of passage. We also lose a bit of character development between all the human beings at the beginning. As is, we barely get any insight into anyone that's not Alexa or Sebastian. Waylon's death adds some CGI blood. No really, they even add some very CGI blood trickling out of his mouth. It's hilarious because this isn't even that violent, yet they clearly cut it in order to achieve a PG-13 rating. We've gotten a ton of games based on the property, and we actually covered them on the channel on our old Playing With Fear series. They're a staple of many childhoods, including my own, and are a blast to play. But none of them are based on this film. 2007 brought us Aliens vs. Predator Requiem, and it is known as one of the worst films in either franchise. So that speaks to just how downhill they went in just one movie. It's an absolute mess and completely negates the very cool ending from this film. Shane Black's The Predator also made mention to AVP, showing Lex Wood's spear at the Project Stargazer base. There are varying opinions on this film, but if anything, I'm just glad we were able to see these two duke it out on the big screen. While it would have benefited by following the humans a lot less and upping the gore, what we received was still night and day better than its follow-up, so I guess that's something. And I mean, plus, what other Predator movie do we get this Batman and Robin style run? What movies would you like to see us explore next? Comment below and we'll see you in the next one.